The latest Pixar movie, Soul, is quite unusual. It has some more adult and philosophical topics mixed in, and there is some experimental, almost abstract animation from time to time. In this video, we're gonna have a closer look at one of my favorite scenes where two of my favorite characters in Seoul have a conversation. And yeah, we're gonna analyze the animation and see what we can learn for our own creative animation work. This really is an animation analysis. We're not gonna do a story interpretation or talk much about the philosophy behind it. There's a lot to talk about in this film, but we, in this video, we'll have a look at how it is animated. How do these characters move and why do they move this way? First, I wanna show you some things that I noticed about the acting that I think you can use in your own animation. Then it's really interesting how they lead the eye from one character to another. We're gonna have a look at how they use rhythm to make this scene more interesting, which is basically just two characters talking to each other. We will see how they use the line of action to push poses or put in some contrasts to previous poses. And last but not least, I just have to geek out about the technical side of things and marvel at uh, how they solved some problems that I would have if I animate something like this. So let's jump in and have a look at it frame by frame. As promised, let's look at the interesting acting decisions that you could also use to make your own animations more interesting and believable. First of all, I think it's a nice little touch that when uh, Terry comes out of the portal, they are walking into in, straight into that direction until they see Jerry standing there and then change the course and wave. Let's speak in acting terms. A character is trying to achieve an objective. This objective has to be achieved or replaced. In this case, they are setting out to find a Jerry. And when they see one, that mini objective is fulfilled and they move on to the next one. Now I need to tell them about my problem. I just love how you see this shift in his walk that is getting dragged over to the other side. Then I think I think what works really great in this scene is the contrast between the two characters. Look how slow Jerry is bending down. I mean, it's it's relatively fast, but Terry is even faster with his uh, gestures there. And there's some excellent contrast in how those characters move differently because, well, they have different personalities and they express their personalities differently in different motions. And here's another very human gesture that Jerry is doing here. Jerry doesn't have legs, but they are clearly facing away from Terry as a signal like, I want to get out of here, I don't have time for that, while the, the head is still uh, leaning into Terry's direction. A gesture like this is called an intention cue, and it happens very often in the position of the legs. If you observe how people behave in a conversation, when they kind of have to go now, or they don't want to talk about something, this happens very often, that with the feet, they would already point away from the conversation. They want to get out of there and they're indicating that by how they hold the lower half of the body while the upper half might still like seem somewhat into the conversation, uh, maybe trying to be polite. This is called an intention cue, a very cool thing to make your animations more believable. And another general thing that I think sets them apart so greatly is just that mouth shape. Jerry is always smiling and Terry always has the corner of the mouth pointing down. And it, it, it's just because of this very simplified style, it's amazing how strong their attitude is coming through in every moment because their facial expression uh, always has the same tendency. I also like the, the other Jerry's, how just by changing the lines slightly, 
uh, they already feel like a very different personality. It's it's amazing how just a few changes can give you a very different type of character. And then here comes a very interesting acting decision, how they are just walking through, doesn't even bother to go around them. Uh, they, and it's really fun that they plop up like beach balls. And it's a really nice touch in, in, in characterizing determination and yeah, how he's also a little bit rude or a lot. <laughs> And it gets amplified again by storming past like a secretary kind of character. Um, oh yeah, and this is the other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's very important that your characters, they were doing something before the camera films them. Um, I've seen a lot of student animation where they kind of start with like a very weak standing pose. The character's just standing there. And then the next pose is this strong, expressive pose. But, you know, technically this character was always living before and was already doing something, already occupied with something. And it should already be a strong pose that is telling about what the character is doing right from the beginning. And, you know, we have that here in the secretary Jerry, they are clearly reading something. And uh, obviously we have it here because there was a previous scene with Jerry talking to the main character. So they are still looking in the direction that uh, Joe Gardner uh, went off. They also use this style to do some fun things that you can only do in this style. Like a lot of this, like the intention cue and just a character storming past something, you could do that in a hyper-realistic animation too. But because they are in this very nice abstract space, they add some stuff that they can only add to this kind of character or, or you know, this style of animation. Um, for example, how the the line curls here in this very stressed and intense Terry. That's really nice. And then I really like the the laugh, how they become so wavy. And let's see what the direction of the wave is. I think it's going, yeah, it's going down. And I think that's also a, a, an important decision. It feels a bit more like freeing like it's go it's going off their chest um and it's not something you know it's something that they shrug off that just flows away from them and i think that's really cool and another thing that only this character can do is going through a file filing cabinet like this coming from the inside of it and it's interesting how this kind of contrasts some more human gestures like the intention cue we saw earlier or they are cracking their knuckles. Why is a divine being made of light energy cracking their knuckles? It's really interesting how they, they mix those, those very human gestures or how they are opening the, um, the cabinet really conveys weight. It's some really nice overlap and follow through how you can see that the body is already fully pushed back. Look, it's starting here, the body reaches the end position, and then the arm is still dragging. And even when they let go, the cabinet is still going a couple frames to the maximum. Um, so there's a nice, first the body, then the arm, and then the cabinet does the bump at its maximum stretch. And yeah, we have this nice uh, contrast of something realistic, something human, and something fun and weird. And another very interesting thing they often do with the Jerry's and the Terry's is to add additional arms or stretch them very long. And I think it's pretty cool to, to really make this hectic, I see everything, I count everything uh, aspect very notable. They kind of also have something from like a, an octopus who's like controlling in all directions. Before we get even deeper into this, I have a little favor to ask from you. If you like these kinds of animation analysis or uh, just the animation tips that I give in general, 
it would help me and my channel out greatly if you would consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe, or hey, maybe you know somebody else who would enjoy this video. It would mean a lot to me if you would share it and like it and all this good stuff. Thank you very much, and now let's get on with it. One thing that the people at Pixar are also experts in is how to lead the eye, how to have the eye go from one person to another. The most simple thing you can do is to have things happen one after the other. Or if you want your viewers to look in a certain direction, that should be the only thing that moves. And you can see that very clearly here. Terry, they have finished their point and are now completely still when the other Jerry's pop up. And then there's a little joke happening here where most of the Jerry's, they are agreeing that Terry is doing an excellent job, except for this one who says, I would say no. And he just says it with enough delay so that the eye is clearly directed at him because all the Jerry's plopped up and then the Jerry that says, I would say no, he's the one that goes last. And that's why you just notice it. By the way, very cool breakdowns here. I like how how this Jerry gets so big and then they reach their final shape a little later. Uh, very nice. And it all ends in, in this, this puckered out mouth. I also love it in the Jerry that says, I would say no. I really like that. That O shape that really fits to this. And you see, it's it's practically the only thing that's moving. It's like catching the eye into that direction. They move the hand first. That is the first thing you that drags the eye over. And then they finish with this big move forward. Now this is the latest point where your eye clearly get caught. And then the mouth, the no is the last thing that moves. So they make it really clear. They really catch your eyes into the direction of the joke, the no. And here's another instance of things happening nicely one after another. Um, the Terry says that they are counting everything, but they're not counting as it happens. They are counting Jerry's blinks after they happen. Here we see first Jerry is blinking and then Terry is demonstrating that they are counting that. Look at how the finger pops out here. It's really cool with how much like all the fingers retract and then this one pops out and goes very large and then it goes smaller again. So you're absolutely certain to see this. <laughs> Once again, notice how gestures happening one after another. The camera focuses on Terry. Now there's not much distracting in the way that could move. They are doing the big gesture of folding their arms and then Jerry has a last few words and then they disappear with a big motion. And after they are gone, after they are completely gone, this is really important, then Terry starts moving again. And this way, the eye has enough time to go from over here to over there. This might seem extremely simple, but I see this been done wrong all the time in students' work, in people submitting stuff to the 11 cl second club. Make sure that you do gestures one after the other. You can keep alive the character that is not doing anything. They still have to breathe. They can settle a little. They can push their pose a little bit. But as soon as you have two big things happening on the left and on the right, uh, it will be distracting to view. Uh, to view, the viewer will not know what, what am I? What am I supposed to see? And might miss important things that you want to show to your audience. We already saw how the Terry does a lot of snappier and faster motions. And uh, Jerry, in contrast, is a little softer and slower. This gives both of these characters a different beat in which they hit poses. If you would tap out Terry's beat, it would be like tap, 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 tap. If we tap out Jerry's beat, it's a lot slower. It's tap, 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 
Another common beginner mistake would be to have everything in kind of like a monotone rhythm to just be like tap, 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 tap. It's much better if your scene has a progression, if it has fast and slow moments, if it goes more like tap, 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 tap. tap. That makes it a lot more interesting and you can have a development within the scene that is underscored by the rhythm of the overall animation. A very good example for this is when Jerry starts counting and we have those very snappy hand motions that hit the beat very clearly. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. I really love that last tap. Like that is really important to be like, there, everything counted and it doesn't add up. It's such a great contrast to, to all this hectic, frantic counting going on and this last very fast motion. And then there's just the, this slow retracting of the hand, almost like a, a snake curling back. It's really nice how it underlines what's going on inside Terry's head. Like, oh, now they must clearly see it and I have it all under control. And it's incredible how, how long he, he's talking while he's still looking at this. Not like directly looking back at Jerry being like, there, can you see it? Like just, you know, here, here, it's right in front of us. Do you see that? That's a nice self-centered, well, I made my point. Uh, kind of gesture. And one very important rhythm thing that is under the whole scene, you can't hear it now, but in the soundtrack, the music has sort of like a clockwork thing going, like a ding, 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 like a second counting uh, uh, theme. And it keeps that during the entire scene. And this is an excellent way to show that, you know, now there's a time limit. Now, uh, the main character really has to find a solution before uh, Terry catches up to him. And I love how in the end there's another rhythm thing starting, like it's not uh, as fast as the ticking of the seconds, but the clacking open of the different drawers um, and they have this massive sound effect um, really starts to set up another countdown and the uh, ticking music actually stops here and it's kind of interesting how on the one hand side it relieved some of the immediate danger and in the immediate threat the ticking stopped but this being has time it has time to look through all of these files to find our main character and i think this does an excellent job of showing how the villain is creeping up on the main character. If you have a chance to watch this scene with a sound, uh, you should pay special attention to how the poses stress single words that they're saying. The gesture of the hand is clearly tied to the lip sync. You can see that they're going off at the same time. Uh, maybe a, there's a little bit of a delay, a little bit of an overlap, but it's, it's clearly coming from um, from the same place. Sometimes the hands are faster and leading the word out of the mouth. Sometimes the, the word is coming out of the mouth first and pushing the arm forward, but they are connected and they should be connected. You shouldn't just randomly change poses and be like, you know, I have to say this and I have to say that and I also have to add this, but you know, it needs to be tied to the word. I also want to say this and do you know, like it, it's the connection between the words and the gestures has to be there and has to be clear. These simplified character designs are great to study the line of action, the main flow of energy that goes through a pose because, well, we can basically see it. And whenever you are constructing poses or studying an animation like we're doing right now, um, it's very important to pay attention to moments where something drastic happens to the line of action, either where it changes greatly in shape or when it flips in direction. This pose is clearly leaning forward to Jerry because 
they really want to tell them something. Like even when they are pointing back, there's still this, this strong direction. I need to reach this other person. And you can see how all the poses, they're just variations of that same line of action going from the bottom right to the top left. Until they really get into the counting, then they flip and, you know, it's the, the numbers that take his attention away from, uh, from Jerry. See how this is just m minor shifts, but they, they give us they give us a little bit of progression every time. How it goes from being clearly diagonally directed in that direction to being more level and then clearly starting to be directed back at Jerry. And this then leads to the turn. So all of this is just little pushes, little variation pushing forward into a direction. And when you're constructing poses, it's, it's really important to think about this progression and how you're going to progress towards something. You know, it doesn't have some, to be something that is physically in the scene. It could also just be a thought like, do I do this or do I do that? Like, you know, and this could be represented by two positions in the room and you could have a lot of fun and experiment with just nudging it slightly into one direction, then have a big reversal, and then nudging a little bit there, maybe nudging a little bit back again. And um, yeah, this is really a, a great way to, to build up a good performance in animation. And keep in mind that even subtle changes can have a big impact, especially when you are in a close-up, just like, just a little tilt, like, hmm, just in the head changing the directions how the eyes are aligned can that can sometimes be perceived as a big change in the character but you know sometimes you might want to flip the entire character around and flip the line of action to uh, have that real big change and um, yeah I think they're doing that masterfully in this scene and last but not least I want to put the spotlight on a technological achievement Maybe I don't know and there's already an animation software out there that can animate something like that with no problem, but I'm amazed of how seamlessly they managed to tuck away extra vertices. If you look here, this part is completely smooth. There's no indication that there are extra vertices waiting for a third arm to pop out, but then, you know, all of a sudden, there's a third arm. And if they are on an extra layer, it's pretty amazing how, how seamlessly they flow into the rest of the body. Look at how during this breakdown, this curve is just perfectly smooth and then suddenly it gets all these extra dents where these Bezier handled points always there and they just manage to hide it very well and make it super smooth or do they have some way to add edge points like randomly and then remove them again um i've i've never seen something like this before i mean and then they obviously they have great control over burning a hole into a shape like it could become an actual hole or it could not become a hole like here his nose like it's not being cut out it's uh, they, they seem to have very great control of what happens to each of those loops if it's going to be burned out or if it's just going to be filled or filled at a different opacity maybe even and then the question is how did they animate it did they actually have bones in these arms or were they deforming every single one of these edge points which can really be a pain in the butt to animate something like this uh, to have like the arm stay at roughly the same thickness if you want to keep the thickness so yeah I'm, I'm just amazed of how seamlessly they just add loops and extra points and there's even this moment here where their hand shape goes from having this two finger thing with a loop in between and then suddenly they pull out extra fingers and it's just 
so smooth and seamless. So I really hope to see a glance in some making of videos how they did this and how they animated it. Uh, because I, it feels so impossible to me to have something that is both so imaginative and free, like they can just extra add extra points and extra loops, but at the same time, there also seems to be a consistency about it, like the thickness of arms and stuff like that. Um, yeah, really cool stuff, really amazing. I hope you had as much fun as I did analyzing this little scene. If you want to know more about animation, maybe you would like to check out the big 2D animation course that I have in the works. You can find it under animatorisland.com 2D. Oh, and what did you think about the movie Soul? Please share your opinion in the comments down below and uh, stay healthy and keep on animating.